Well, good evening, everyone, and in some cases, good morning, and welcome to our second Marketing Institute Ireland Global Marketing Leadership Programme Fireside Chat, developed in conjunction, of course, with Berkeley Global UC, UC Berkeley. And only last week, I was just informed, Forbes announced Berkeley as the number one college in the US ahead of some pretty impressive competition, I'm sure we all know. So congratulations to all the team in Berkeley uh, on that achievement. This program that has been developed is a world first and talks to the four essential core competencies that empower marketing executives to lead digital transformation in their organizations. They are data-driven business intelligence, customer-centric and technology-conscious marketing, strategy and leadership, and of course, organization and change management. At our last fireside chat, we heard from Pat Reed, who spoke about agile leadership and it gave a sense of the themes that would be discussed through the program. Um, and today we are going to get a flavor of the themes in the marketing pillar. But before we get into that, I'm delighted to be joined today by Robert O'Driscoll, uh, Consul General of Ireland to the Western United States. Robert assumed his duty as Consul General of Ireland um, in 2017 in San Francisco. And Robert, I'm delighted to say today, will address the audience in a few moments and talk to the opportunities about this program, that this program presents in connecting with the incredible network and companies, of course, that are operating and leading the way in the Bay Area. Prior to his appointment as Consul General, he was Deputy Director in the Trade Division in the Foreign Ministry. In 2015, he was the first Irish diplomat chosen to participate in a public-private staff exchange program in which he was seconded to the Avalon Aircraft Leasing Firm in Dublin. He previously served as Private Secretary to Ireland's Deputy Prime Minister, Tánaiste, of course, as we know, to the, uh, to the Foreign Minister from 2013 to 2015 as well. He has also served in, the Dublin, in Dublin in the Foreign Ministry in the Development Cooperation Division on EU matters and in the Political Division. So without further ado, I would like to hand you over to Robert. Good afternoon, Robert, or good morning, should I say. Good morning, David. Um, greetings from uh, the West Coast here in San Francisco. Um, delighted to join yourself, um, Frederick Earl and Nadish Therese from UC Berkeley, Global, uh, Global Berkeley, uh, for this uh, morning's event. I want to commend uh, both yourself and Marketing Institute Ireland and Berkeley Global for this exciting initiative. It is, as you say, one of a kind in Ireland and, uh, and the world, as you say. Um, so I think it's a very, very exciting initiative. My, I've been doing some research for this and talking to my, I have a lot of friends in marketing here, a lot of Irish here in marketing. And they tell me that, you know, science, uh, marketing is as much about science as it is about art. And much of that science is powered by technology, which has its genesis here in California and across the world leading innovation ecosystem here on the West Coast. Many ad tech and martech firms obviously choose Ireland as their point of entry uh, to Europe, and we hope they can continue to do so. Uh, and as a result, we have this large group of Irish, the front lines, determining the very future of marketing. And I'm excited this program will create more bi-directional connectivity between marketers in Ireland and California, because this program brings together senior thought leadership in the US, California and the Bay Area, and of course, your own members in Ireland. And for sharing best practice on how to drive digital transformation, to take advantage of the enormous opportunities these new technologies present uh, to marketers. But I think it also reflects well uh, your own institute's uh, commitment to education and lifelong learning. These are crucial elements in personal development uh, to ensuring that uh, our professionals uh, remain at the cutting edge of their industry. I think today's event uh, is a really good example. I look back at your previous event in, in June also. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing, to, uh, hearing from Maria Ginotti uh, uh, later on to get her insights from her uh, very illustrious career uh, and experience in technology, financial services, and retail e-commerce. I think that a program that convenes thought leaders from California and Ireland makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, the west coast of Ireland, uh, west, sorry, the west coast of Europe and the west coast of Ireland, or of America, we've had an awful lot of connectivity uh, over the last 100 and 170 years. Um, I always say that, you know, Ireland and California share a, what I call a fauna inspiragia. It's a circle of inspiration. Um, with uh, flows of people in both directions and flows of ideas. Uh, and it's very exciting. Uh, this is part of, uh, that, uh, of, of that historical flow. Uh, today, of course, we have a very modern, very dynamic uh, economic and diasporic uh, relationship. California is Ireland's largest trade investment partner in the US, 
More than 300 Irish companies support the Free Enterprise Ireland are active across California, and 160 of those, about half of them, have offices here. Uh, we're one of the largest investors and creators of jobs in California. Irish companies employ over 10,000 people across 200 locations across the state. That's a top 10 in terms of international investment into the state, into the Golden State. An average an Irish company opens an office here every three weeks on the West Coast, a trend which remarkably has been sustained throughout the pandemic. Um, obviously, the companies come here to, to do what you're doing. It's to connect into this world-leading uh, innovation ecosystem, the, the capital, the smart capital is here, the talent, and of course, the market side, fifth largest economy in, in the world. And I think for those Irish people, Irish companies, and for Irish professionals who have real global ambition, California is a natural place uh, for them to wish to engage with uh, and to be successful in. Of course, it's a two-way relationship and California headquartered companies uh, play a major role in our economy. These, today, these companies employ around 50,000 people, that's from across the West Coast, predominantly California, establishing an operation, new investment in Ireland on average every, every two weeks. When I think of the Ireland-California relationship, and I think you know, I think this, 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 this course really sits in the middle of it. It really is a, a keystone of that relationship is around talent. Ireland is one of the most educated workforces in the world, over 53% of 30 to 30, 34 year olds having a third level qualification. And our education system ranks in the top 10 uh, globally. I think what we've seen when Irish people come over here, um, that, 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 that education that they have, the talent that they have uh, shines through and um, they, they exceed, uh, they, they, they do so, so, so well here. And we're very, very proud of all the work that they, uh, that they do. Um, what was I gonna say? The, 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 the best marketers, my experience, are influence, influencers and change makers. They drive their organizations forward, they inspire and guide their teams and take on complex challenges and make a meaningful contribution to the business community and society at large. Would you be proud of those members of our diaspora who've, made, who've engaged in such change making here and their contribution towards the company's own global ambitions? Finally, I just want to thank David and his team for engaging in the Bay Area, for making these connections, for adding to our historic Bonnie and Sparagia. Um, you know, your, Marketing Institute Ireland is renowned for the passionate way in which you educate and enable your over two and a half thousand members. I think those members are the backbone of Ireland's development towards being a global hub for marketing expertise. Initiatives such as the Global Marketing uh, Leadership Programme are important in this regard. This venture harnesses the talents of Silicon Valley for your members and also the potential to engage our diaspora community here, which are really, really welcome. It's an important initiative and one that the I and the consulate here are happy to support today and into the future. And just to say, uh, we're going to open Ireland House, San Francisco. It's due to uh, take occupancy later on this year. And of course, as the public health situation and uh, stabilizes a little bit. We hope to welcome you, David, and your members here in the Bay Area uh, into, into our new home in San Francisco, uh, hopefully next year when, uh, when normal, travel, uh, no, normal travel resumes. So until then, good luck with the program, uh, and I look forward to working with you again in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, I really appreciate those uh, kind words. And I think you said uh, something that really hit me there was you talked about influencers and change makers. And I think you're absolutely right. That's what that's what this program talks to. It talks to actually taking that leadership and influ influencing role and ultimately what is digital transformation only to become a change maker. And uh, so thank you so much for that. It chimes beautifully with what we're trying to achieve with the program. So thank you, Robert. And also joining us today, I'm delighted to say as I click forward, is Frederick T. Whirl, who is the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs at UC Berkeley Extension. And Frederick has been instrumental in the development of this program uh, with ourselves over the last eight or nine months, uh, I think at this stage, uh, Frederick. But Frederick is a researcher, especially in innate human behavior and an expert in academic innovation and design. And at Berkeley, he is developing fully integrated transdisciplinary study programs that allow students and lifelong learners to acquire the specific skill set they need to succeed in their careers in the upcoming fourth industrial revolution. With his team, he brings uh, together world leading researchers from, the Ber from Berkeley and industry experts from Silicon Valley who work and teach at the forefront of academic innovation. So I, as you can tell by what I've just told you there, Frederick has been instrumental in developing the, 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 the modules and, and ultimately the content for, for, for the, the program that obviously is going to be kickstarting in January. So Frederick, uh, uh, if you want to say a few words in relation to it. Thank you so much, David, and, and thank you so much also, Robert, for, for being here. This is an amazing opportunity, and particularly also thank you for 
um, Maria to be here today to share her insights. Um, for us at Berkeley, it's really an absolute pleasure to um, work with Marketing Institute Ireland. Um, it's rare that we really find across the globe um, experts that um, are so in sync with what we're doing. And it was wonderful what Robert just said um, about the role of the marketer being the change maker. That is like literally the tagline of Berkeley. Berkeley change maker. It's actually no joke trademarked. Um, that's what we perceive our university is built for. Um, it is an entire university made by change makers for change makers since its inception. Um, it is uh, also now, uh, as you mentioned, thank you very much for pointing that out, ranked by Forbes number one college uh, in the US for that specific reason and why. Is that important? It's not important in the sense of um, uh, us boasting about it. It's actually just understanding what is behind it. And Forbes even had an entire article published why Berkeley made it uh, to the number one. And the reason is access. It's the ability to provide people access to networks and experts, either in industry or in research, that are usually unaccessible for um, anyone um, other than the very, very few, very privileged people who make it maybe into an undergraduate or graduate PhD program or who make it into um, even the San Francisco Bay Area. All of these things are not accessible and particularly not necessarily accessible about um, to people of all different types of backgrounds. So this is what we pride ourselves on is the ability to serve as a hub and serve as a connector. And the idea that we are able to connect with um, other marketing experts uh, in Ireland is particularly exciting for me, not only because I love Ireland, I've been there uh, a lot in, in the past, but also with the Marketing Institute specifically, because I'm also a marketer, so I'm, I'm with colleagues. I'm absolutely enchanted to, to be able to work with you on this program. I'm able to provide insights um, to anyone who is interested um, from our perspective, from the Berkeley perspective on how the program works. Um, one thing that I can quickly say at the beginning uh, is exactly what uh, David said. This is not a program the way you uh, might remember what college or university is like at all. This is a program that's tailored for um, high level managers, executives who are not looking to write essays and do assignments, um, but who are actually looking to add to their expertise the nuggets, the knowledge that might come out of particular companies, out of the networks, out of research in the field of um, marketing, consumer-centric marketing and technology, data-driven business intelligence, and particularly using these competencies and learning how to use these competencies to drive um, digital transformation within a company. So with this, again, thank you so much um, for, for all the collaboration that we have been able to have with you, the, the, the content creation, the, the insights that we were able to build together, uh, David and Jenny um, and your team. It's really a great pleasure. And thank you, Maria, for being here today as a panelist. I'm very much looking forward to this, to this fireside chat. Great. And thank you, Frederick, for that. And as I said, Frederick is going to be around. If anybody has any questions in relation to, I suppose, the learning experience or anything in particular that's specific to Berkeley, by all means, put the questions in the chat or the Q&A and I'll put them to uh, Frederick maybe after Maria has spoken. But uh, I think what you talked there about access and networks um, really speaks to why, obviously, Berkeley is the perfect partnership for ourselves. So uh, thanks for uh, being here as well, Frederick. And last but certainly not least, we are delighted to be joined by Maria Giannotti, who is the head of revenue marketing at Unbabel. And just so you understand, uh, or, sorry, for, from Maria's perspective, she has extensive marketing experience in, tech, in technology, financial services, retail, e-commerce, uh, to name but a few of the sectors. Her speciality is driving high performance inbound and outbound marketing programs that target enterprise and mid-sized companies across the retail, e-commerce, travel, hospitality, tech, and fin sectors, uh, finance sectors. Mm -hmm. She also served as the former president of the American Marketing Association in San Francisco, the largest association of marketeers in the, or for marketeers in the US. And today, Marie is really going to give us a kind of an overview of the marketing pillar of the program that will very much, I suppose, focus on AI automation and customer mining, 
UX, of course, unique, unique experience design, emerging platforms, and data-driven personalized content, to name just a few of the verticals. So without further ado, Maria, I'm going to hand over to you, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, I'm sure if anybody has any questions for Maria while she's presenting, or maybe at the end, if you just put them in the chat in the Q&A, and I'll put them to Maria. And Maria, no doubt, I'll probably jump in and out and ask an odd question or two as you're speaking as well. So I'll uh, hand over, and I think, Christina, you're going to share um, Maria's slides. Great, thank you, David, and thank you, Frederick and Robert. It's so nice meeting you. I love what you said about uh, marketing being all about art and science, which is so true. Uh, I'm super excited about this topic as I love everything related to technology. Um, as head of revenue marketing at Unbabel, uh, which uh, you know was mentioned, uh, we have an AI-powered translation platform for customer support and operations teams, where I run initiatives for all of our programs to drive demand and generate revenue. So if you can go to the next slide, uh, some of the things that I'll be discussing today is uh, digital transformation, uh, you know, what's happening in, in that world, uh, customer centric marketing, um, artificial intelligence in marketing, how are we using that nowadays, um, what are the emerging technologies that we should be aware of, and then a little bit about what this program entails, right, for you. So uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, perfect. So maybe, Maria, David, do you want to get started with, with the question? Maybe even before we start with that, Maria, you know, why has digital transformation become so important for marketeers? And maybe that'll kind of kind of spur the conversation, I suppose, from our perspective. Perfect. Yeah, let's get started. Uh, so yeah, so part of my focus, right, with Adam Babel includes identifying new technologies that can help us scale and make our work uh, initiatives easier. So this is where digital, digital transformation comes in. Um, First of all, digital transformation has been going on for years, but this is not a new concept. Uh, but what's interesting to discuss is how digital transformation has evolved, especially during the pandemic. So basically, if we, if we can say uh, the evolution of digital transformation to a 2.0 stage. Um, and this happened because as marketers, we had uh, to find a way to, to better connect with our, our customers digitally, right? Considering we could no longer rely on in-person opportunities. So the neat thing that happened um, here in San Francisco, San Francisco Bay Area was that Silicon Valley companies were early adopters of pushing the limit of automation at a faster pace during this time. If you think about chatbots, intense software, uh, new account-based marketing approaches, um, and engaging virtual experiences basically took a life of their own. Um, this is exactly what happened, and I say this because I know this firsthand, because this is exactly what happened with my company um, when we were relying heavily on in-person events we had signed up for so many conferences in 2020 that did not happen, right, because of COVID, but we had no online programs in place. So not, uh, nor the technologies to drive unique virtual experiences or target specific accounts. So in my experience, uh, Bay Area marketers were really early adopters of advanced AI and new emerging technologies uh, that became really critical during a time of uncertainty where we had to do more with less as marketers. So um, if you go to the next slide, Thank you. So if we uh, move to the next one, the second thing that I want to mention is um, how um, digital transformation during the pandemic, uh, the pandemic kind of gave us a more targeted approach, right? So we had new consumer behaviors um, that uh, we had to look at how to do something with uh, from a digital perspective through various technologies. How can we be more targeted, right, with our customers and prospects? And according to Gardner, most marketers expect customer experience to be their primary differentiator when marketing to customers. And to create better customer experiences, um, you need to understand your customer preference, right? And behaviors, which leads to the capability for marketers uh, to drive uh, personalized and even better uh, hyper-personalized experiences. Uh, another reason for the digital transformation uh, is that access to technologies has allowed us to become more targeted in that approach. And we're spending more technologies than ever before. And the beauty of spending more on technologies is that it also helps us provide measurable ROI. So in a way, you're not throwing money on difficult to measure events, uh, billboards, ads, but rather on technologies that can show the effectiveness of your campaigns. Hence, we're able to do more and spend on marketing dollars more wisely than ever before. Um, then if we look at our customer centricity, so the evolution of digital transformation has provided us with the capability to drive better customer experiences by leveraging technologies that can give us intelligence about a customer's current preferences and purchasing habits, which again helps us become more, become more customer-centric marketers. 
And lastly, this is uh, really important. Um, to some of the year, uh, to some of the this year and a half, uh, with you know during the pandemic, we can surely say that digital transformation has changed the playing field for marketers. I would say that today's marketers have become very data driven, and they're uh, heavily focused on leveraging uh, innovations, including predictive analytics, uh, market analytics software, AI, and machine learning to drive better uh, customer experiences. I couldn't agree Which, more. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. That. Right. And, and that 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 influence back to uh, Robert's point that influence at, at board level I think is becoming I suppose stronger. Yes, which uh, very importantly leads to my last point here uh, that not only are CMOs more likely to get a seat at the table nowadays, but since the CMOs role in digital transformation is cohesively connected to a buyer's journey, there's even a higher stake for a CMO to lead their organization's entire digital transformation journey, which is very exciting uh, opportunity for us. Uh, when marketing leaders become early adopters and innovators in technology, uh, they start to develop a more decisive point of view within their business context and space, which is extremely valuable to drive go-to-market strategies, right? And I think all marketers can, uh, can agree with that. Uh, and this is op the opportunity that senior marketing leaders have been waiting for, which is to have the ability to gain visibility and recognition within their organizations through the understanding and execution of digital transformation efforts. So I, th I think this is a very exciting time and this is why I love digital transformation where how is, it's advancing basically. Very good. So AI, so everybody talks about, I, I sometimes think that people talk about artificial intelligence and don't necessarily kind of see, well, what role does it play from a marketing perspective? So you might, you might throw some shape on that, Maria, if you don't mind. Yeah, AI can be a little scary, right? Scary word, what is, what, what is really AI? Well, first off, uh, the B2C world has been setting up the bar on personalization and expectation of our buyers, and it's up to us to really match that on the digital front. Uh, if you go to the next slide, um, I found this quote that I really liked. Uh, Deloitte, it was by Deloitte um, saying that we live in an era where customers expect us to understand their wants and needs. So the easiest way we can gather better insights into our customers is really through AI, machine learning, and big data. So, so that's where AI comes in. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, talking about the tech landscape, uh, B2B is practically playing catch up on personalization, to be honest, I'm in B2B and I can, I can be honest and say that. <laughs> because as, as I mentioned, B2C has been uh, driving personalization efforts at a faster scale than B2B, right? But with over 5,000 technologies in hand, uh, some say it's even about 8,000, it's not a secret that we're spending more technologies than ever before. Most of these technologies are driven by AI. Uh, and according to Gartner, this, I found this super interesting, marketing budgets as a percentage of a company's revenue fell from 11% to 6.4 in 2020, but the allocation increased in the technology spend. Uh, that means marketers have basically cut back on other areas, but when it comes to technology, uh, we keep spending, right? So super important. Uh, with, yeah, AI is driving all, I mean, most of those technologies. Where has it become a real game changer for marketing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I would say one of the reasons we're spending more on, it, on technology is that these help us better determine measurable ROI from our marketing campaigns, which is also something I, I already mentioned. Uh, but with that said, AI plays a huge role in helping marketers do more with their time and resources. So, so instead of being seen only as a cost center, uh, we now have a seat at the table and we're, as we're driving really measurable growth and revenue for our businesses. But the beauty of AI is that it doesn't remove humans altogether. And this is where people get scared, right? Or it's going to take away my job because you still need a human touch. Um, but it, it does really help marketers streamline and optimize where, where needed in a quicker pace. So really, the, I suppose, the, the, the exciting thing, I suppose, when you think about the digital transformation, Marie, is that I suppose the challenge marketers have always had is almost like proving the ROI on their, on their dollars. Uh, you know, if I spend one dollar, I'm going to deliver X amount of revenue. And mm -hmm. I suppose... Really, I suppose digital uh, the journey that the, the people are going on and the transformation that everybody's seeing, and I suppose what's at what's at the driving end of what's happening in Silicon Valley is really how you're actually getting down to the nano detail of how you can actually really deliver true revenue with every euro spent. Is that a kind of, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah, uh, if we go to the next slide. Um, so talking about some areas where marketing has proven to be a game changer, um, there are some. There are two areas that I, I want to mention today. So the first area is around content curation and generation. Um, and you, you might know some of these platforms, and this is just examples. I mean, there are so many platforms out there, but these are some that I'm, I'm very familiar with. 
But um, advances in AI have allowed marketers to better personalize the experience with what their readers want to read next, uh, based on previous interactions with their companies from page views and how they engage with your content. This, is all, this all plays a factor in how you can tailor their customer experience again. Uh, another way that you can personalize is creating a message that seems like it's shared in real time by a sales or customer service person to a specific account or a contact within uh, that account, let's say, let's say your target list, account list. Uh, that's also an experience that marketers are seeing a lot of success with. That's something that, that really took off during um, the pandemic. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, the next area I want to call out is around chatbots. Um, as we all know, it's been around for years. Um, it's, it's helped us answer questions in a timely fashion without having customers waste their time on like say, calling or submitting a demo request, which is really tedious. But nowadays, the difference is that we're seeing capabilities of crazy advanced human interaction. I mean, that's hyper personalized. Buzz that know that your locations or previous data and then can drive somewhat meaningful conversations to make you take a specific action. It's how really how chatbots have progressed uh, this last year. It's really also similar. Sorry, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, it's really interesting because when you think about chatbots, everybody goes, oh yeah, no, we have chatbots. But it's only when I was talking to you last week that I kind of got to a sense, I said, my God, if, if I worked in utilities or insur you know, insurance or banking, uh, retail, like uh, the opportunity to kind of connect with companies and see what they're doing, you know, in the immersion phase of this program would give you a real step forward in relation to the competition because you could end up connecting with a company that is doing some amazing stuff in the chatbot space uh, that you could actually bring back to your organization and could really mm -hmm. see what they're doing and, and that to me is what excites me about uh, for the participants of this program is that they really do get a chance to to get a, 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 not just a, a, an insight and a look into the unpublished things that are happening in, in Silicon Valley, but they actually get an opportunity to, to connect with these people, have conversations with these people and potentially collaborate. Yeah, that's what we want to get out of this, right? That's I think that's the beauty of this program. Um, yes, chatbots have definitely taken a life of their own. Uh, and we also keep seeing a lot of acquisitions to make these even better, have more intelligence, insights. So uh, this keeps progressing. Um, and yeah, with I mean, chatbots, you can have specific conversation flows with your target accounts again in context. Uh, this is applicable uh, to both B2C, B2B. Um, today's chatbots can definitely help you drive strategic objectives of growth, uh, such as high quality conversions uh, with less human resources that can ultimately increase revenue, right? That's really what we care about as marketers. Um, and then um, moving on to the next topic. So... Yeah. So, what are the types of emerging technologies, uh, platform or platforms that are helping marketers to be more targeted and personalized in their approach? So, there's obviously so many out there, Maria. But what are the ones that, I suppose, give us a flavor of what's out there? Yes, there are so many, right? So, I will pick a. I'll pick the ones that I thought were more most uh, not more it's more interesting, but uh, that were kind of leading the way of of this this um, this uh, th these type of technology or leading the way into the technology of emerging technologies. There's so many cool ones, right? But so um, I would say an emerging technology that most B2B marketers gravitated towards during the pandemic was uh, buyer intent. And if we can go to the next slide so you can kind of see what that looks like from just snap view. Uh, the reason being was because our buyers were spending more time online. Uh, marketing budgets were getting cut, as I mentioned. So we had to find a more affordable, but still digitally friendly way to find our buyers. Uh, with buyer intent platforms, we're able to capture known, unknown intent signals uh, to determine which buyers are in market and our and our sales team should focus on, as well as which prospective buyers we should spend ad dollars towards. Um, this is something actually I use for my company that is super important for us because so we're in the B2B space um, and we have a target account list and we need we have a small sales team that needs to be very focused. Um, and these intent signals told us when buyers uh, were exploring solutions taken from their search and behavioral data. So that was yeah, habits, right? So that's was super important for us. Um, and basically, uh, intent data consists of first, second, and third party elements and identifies when companies are actively researching specific product categories. So it's, it's super useful. Uh, the next one I wanted to mention, if you can move the slides, because you know, okay, so the next one, this is by your intent, this is kind of how it looks, how, what, everything you can get with by your intent, by the way, but, but we, I'll, of course, during this program, we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in depth, but maybe we, yeah, we can go to the next topic. 
The other one I wanted to mention, um, it's an important emerging technology for B2C marketers, uh, is customer analytics platforms. Uh, applicable uh, to both, uh, to both, to really to both, to both actually B two C, B two B, but um, it can help you define what features and customer actions lead to outcomes and where to double down. So it's mostly used by B two C, but it, it could be beneficial for a B two B marketer as well. Uh, these help marketers get more information about customer behavior and product data that can help them improve messaging, uh, buyer journeys, and, and learn about the paths customers take to your desired out outcome. And most importantly, which behaviors lead to conversions or drop-offs, right? So that's really uh, important intelligence you can get from those. Um, and if we go to the next slide, um, talking about predictive and marketing, uh, both applicable to B2B and B2C, can tell you who your next customer should be, be, be based on data from current customers. Uh, predictive analytics helps marketers in understanding consumer behaviors and trends, uh, predicting future shifts, so, so they can plan their campaigns accordingly. And that's something I, we also use at my work. Uh, basically, it uses data models, statistics, and machine learning to predict future events, which is, you know, it's, it's also super important. And as a marketer, you, if you can think ahead of what's going to happen, you can spend your marketing dollars better as well, right? So, yeah, so I, we, we use this, this as well. And the last thing I wanted to mention was is ad platforms. Um, it's account-based marketing advertising specifically, uh, which allows marketers to target individuals within a specific company with personalized messages at scale. This is mostly for B2B. Uh, you can basically automate dynamic campaigns based on a context job title and account stage of their sales cycle, where they are, you know, in their, which stage, their industries, and other uh, information in your Salesforce CRM or any I mean, CRM for that matter. So it's primarily B2B, is, it, is there a B2B solution or can it be applied to B2C as well or is it just primarily being used by B2B? Uh, this one targets companies and individuals within companies. So if you do a B2C, uh, not, 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 not really. It's very applicable to B2B. But there might be, I mean, there might be, honestly. I might not know about it just because I'm not in, you know, in that world. But I'm sure there is <laughs> so some, um, something similar at least. But yeah, but this one is specifically to B2B. Um, and this is honestly not a, a new concept. ABM advertising has uh, been, you know, been around for years. Uh, but during the pandemic, several ABM platform vendors went through acquisitions to extend their offerings and allow for the, ne the next generation of ABM that provide richer account insights, leveraging both AI and predictive intelligence. So, David, to your point, there might be some B two C, you know, acquisition, you know, companies that they, they acquired that provides uh, solutions for both both worlds. So that might that might be a thing. Um, and this is a snippet, of course, there are so many other technologies, but that we will talk more about in the program, but um, we can go to the next slide. I think we can talk a little, talk a little bit about the program specifically. Because I, I think, I think the, the one thing really is, I suppose, you know, people want to get a kind of a sense of, you know, what are going to be the kind of the takeouts, uh, kind of, you know, obviously, you know, we're, we're only giving a kind of a broad stroke kind of view of some of the, some of the technologies and emerging technologies and how AI is impacting and everything else. But I suppose it's ultimately what can, I suppose, participants of this program expect? Yes, great question. So, um, uh, well, as the lead instructor, right, I'll be the lead instructor for the marketing stream and a marketing technology practitioner. Uh, I want to give you the insights or the, the you know, the program attendees in, uh, insights into the latest technologies uh, uh, Silicon Valley marketers like myself are investing in to drive the most effective, hyper-personalized customer experiences. So at the end of the day, it's all about the customer experience. I also want to inspire you to take action to lead the digital transformation efforts across your entire organization, uh, not only within the marketing realm, right? So if you know more about the technologies and, and not like as a hands-on, like I don't want you to know the specific executional things, like that's, you know, your team can do that. It's more about the bigger picture and what's out there so you can drive those efforts for your team and make those suggestions and right for your company. That's a really important point you're making, Maria, because, uh, uh, you know, this this obviously is, uh, you know, it's targeted at a senior audience. And, and I think that's a really important uh, mm -hmm. into the line level detail of how all this works, but really giving you the right. view of how this impacts and how this can support. And I think that's a really, really important uh, uh, point to make. So Correct. Sorry, so. I mean, we wouldn't have enough time to even go through all the platforms. You know, there is no way. But <laughs> but as a high level overview of everything that exists, you know, the, the insights you can get, I think it's important that you know about, right? That people know about or marketers know about. 
Um, also, the other thing I want to I want to teach by uh, teach you uh, teach you all by by doing right. Learn by doing, basically. Be an early adopter and learn how you can bring AI led emerging technologies into your own organization and become the leader uh, for tomorrow as your organization keeps growing and advancing. Right. So again, again, I want you to be aware of what's out there and how you can bring that into your organization. Um, I want I want to walk you through the top uh, technologies that can help you get ahead in automation, uh, personalization, and customer centricity. Whether you're in B two B or B two C, and like I said again, it doesn't mean like the executional part of these platforms, because your team can do that. But I want you to know the strategic components of these platforms, right, and how these can help you uh, generate revenue, which is really what what I do and what you know what, what my focus always is: how, how can we generate revenue? What what platforms can we use for that? Um, and the last thing that's really exciting, uh, organize a company visit so you can get a close look into a leading emergency technology provider in the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's something I'm also will uh, organize and put together and, and make it exciting for, for you to get insights into how these companies work. Brilliant. And I think, okay, I think that's the beauty of it, um, uh, Maria, in relation to this program. You have, I suppose, the six months of, of, of the modules uh, that obviously uh, leadership, which Pat very kindly brought us through at the last Fireside Chat, and obviously the marketing uh, leadership and people choice that Pat brought us through, and also now from a marketing perspective. But the beauty of this is, is the immersion program or the immersion module at the end of the six months, uh, the three days in Silicon Valley. And, and maybe, uh, Frederick, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll bring you in a, 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 at this point to talk about what the opportunities that presents, because Back to the point about Berkeley being now the number one university in the states. Uh, so we we definitely made the right decision partnering up with you, Frederick. But um, but I suppose that that to, to, well, how you talked about access and networks, and to Maria's point here around company visits, that's going to be a core component of of, of the immersion session, is is it not? I mean the the perspective is if you are at a high level and you are looking for. Uh, learning that really adds to your expertise. What you're looking for is ability to learn certain or understand certain concepts, but more so, actually, how do you apply them? How do they um, integrate in what you're doing? What do they mean for your business um, and the reality that you're in? So the program actually uh, being designed, building like the foundational blocks um, of looking at the, the data um, and business intelligence, um, going into tools and marketing, and then how do I apply them managerially really tries to cover this. But more so, each single piece really gets understood in all the different facets. So oh, here's a concept, here's a method, have a company visit, have the opportunity to see how it gets applied, have the opportunity to talk with the experts about your reality in your company, in your environment, and how that might relate and how... Um, obstacles that might be there might be overcome or not. Some things cannot be applied, but at least you know um, that they exist and why you're not applying them or not using them. And then on top of it, really the opportunity to actually connect with companies that can make it happen. Um, the ideal thing for us is when somebody comes out of the uh, program like this and then literally says, okay, here's a plan now that I have of what I want to implement and how do I do this? Well, as marketers, most of the time we write an email or pick up the phone and get somebody um, to help us out with this. And if you are meeting um, with a company that uses certain startups to, um, for example, yeah, do uh, voice recognition, automatic replies, voice replies, and so on, and you want that for your company, well, now you have a direct link and direct access to Silicon Valley companies and startups providing the latest tech, for example. And you have a colleague in a larger company that you have had the chance to meet or that you can get connected to through one of the speakers or the people that we visit in companies um, that can say, okay, this is how we did it in our company and how we integrated this level of technology and how it worked. Brilliant, brilliant. And, uh, and, and, and... Maria, I'm sure you could uh, talk for hours about some of the the, the incredible uh, emerging technologies that are coming out. But but um, I think one of the things that really strikes me uh, uh, is the uh, is just the opportunity. If I if I'm in a business in the B two B space in Ireland and I'm looking to take a lead, or in the B two C space, should I say? Yes, I refer to you to this. I just think there's so many opportunities that this program does present um, mm -hmm. in relation to uh, stealing a march on your competition and. 
what better way to do that than to, to than to you know what, what if you want to influence and become a change maker as Robert so eloquently put it at the start what better okay. way to do it than to uh, to bring real innovation and thinking and and different approach to uh, 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 digital and engagement and and, and and digital transformation than than do something like that look I'm sure there's uh, questions um and maybe uh, I, I know I've asked a few of Maria uh, throughout her chat um I'm, Maria I'm taking it that was your last slide sorry before I before yes I, uh, it is yeah I do want to say yeah because I think this program it's it's great in the sense that where else are you going to know about these technology like there's no Okay, you can learn about these technologies, uh, talking to a vendor, right? But then you'll know about that specific technology and you won't really know the realm of the technologies that, could, that you could use for different things, right? So honestly, like that's what I think is very interesting about this, where there is no other thing like this. There's no other program that talks about technologies. Like I am not have, as a practitioner, have not been able to find anywhere where I can get those insights unless it's with a specific company. And then you only get one viewpoint, right, of the story. So that that's I think that's the beauty of this, and I I think what a project also said the networking, it, you know, the networking with other peers, um, sequin and what they're doing. Not only me, you know, pitching the choirs here, but but also learning from your uh, your peers is I think is super valuable. So I, I think good. that's those would be for me that this is why I would want to attend something like this <laughs> if yeah. I you know by the opportunity. Up, Maria, uh, uh, Christina, you might stop sharing actually the screen just so everybody can see us a, a, a little bit better if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um. But I, uh, sorry, I, I completely agree, Maria, the, uh, the whole way through the process of developing this program, uh, the, the piece that excited me was obviously the peer-to-peer the -peer engagement, the online kind of learning, the, the sessions, uh, I suppose that, that um, I suppose, a thirst for knowledge and that's uh, the, uh, taking it all in, but to ultimately then be able to actually bring it to life, having conversations mm -hmm. with people who are actually, actually do, doing this. And, yeah. you know, you have a challenge in your organisation, you, you talk about digital transformation and the challenges that you may present in your organization and you have an opportunity to actually potentially come back come back with this program come back from this program with a solution and uh geez that's fantastic and and and, and the connections that can that can happen um i'm not sure if anybody has any questions or anything that they want to put to the panel but um i don't know something coming through here um is there still places available on the program? There is, and um, the closing date, just so you know, is the 20th of um, September. I'm right in saying that, um, the 20th of September. Um, so I think it's, um, if anybody's interested, please reach out to uh, either myself or uh, Jenny Bishop, who's the head of learning solutions in the Marketing Institute. I think you can get her at jenny at mii.ie or indeed myself at david at mii.ie. Um, I have a question in here as well. How do I apply? So again, if you, um, reach out to Jenny and um, she will uh, bring you through that. But um, it's really a case of, I think what's really important about this program is we want to get the pitch at the right level and, and certainly the people who are uh, going to be participating in this are all at that stage where they, you know, they're being challenged and charged with bringing around change in the organization, around bringing agility to the organization um, you, you know, understanding how better to use business uh, to, data to drive business intelligence and, and really to think of the technology conscious marketing angle to to everything that they're doing so uh so we very much uh I want that peer to peer engagement to become a key part of the program as we go through it um another question here uh bump, 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 bump. a question to you maria in relation to uh, uh, uh what emerging technology is the one that excites you most at the moment oh my gosh uh that's a great question uh for me honestly buyer intent i think that is and also uh, the customer analytics pred uh, predictive analytics I think that's super valuable uh, just, you know, because you can better spend your marketing dollars knowing which accounts, uh, which, you know, which, which companies are looking for your, your solutions, super valuable, right? So then you're not targeting in the blind, basically. Um, that for me is, I am, I am in the B2B space, but if I also were in the B2C space, uh, customer analytics, just knowing more about your customers to drive those customer experiences, that better customer experiences and more targeted in a more targeted approach, I think it's, it's my two, the top two. Okay. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, Frederick, talk to me about, I suppose, the, you know, big fear with all these programs is people turn on and say, um, oh my God, how much work is going to be involved in this? And, uh, and you know, is it, going to, is it going to take me weekends and everything else? And, you know, mm -hmm. and that's not how it is. So do you want to give a flavor, Frederick, of, of I suppose, the, the learning approach, the commitment and, and ultimately uh, the output? I mean, this, the central part of this is effectively everybody comes with their problem. Everybody comes with their um, kind of challenges that they currently have in the company. And that's the, that's the thread that basically goes through the entire program. So everything that you learn in a lecture 
you have the opportunity to discuss with the speaker directly afterwards in terms of how does it apply to my case. And you have the opportunity to discuss with the other people within the, in the group. So the learning is literally from the hearing and understanding and interacting in the lecture to actually an application case for yourself. Then you have um, the opportunity to have reading. So articles, for example, if there's uh, things published to prepare for a next um, for a next speaker or for a next company visit to just when you're in it, all the things you hear make sense and are contextualized right away. Um, there is no like write an essay on this and this and uh, try to, I don't know, analyze uh, these things or, or do quizzes. And uh, you, there's no moment where you show up and it's pop quiz. Um, <laughs> not oh, multiple choice. oh it's God. Yeah. really not the case it's it's really important to understand that um, you don't get out of this with a grade or you don't get out of this with a um, and like kind of an academic oh I, I did a course or something you get out of this with a certification that you have been able to um, incorporate and are now able to apply and use, not just theoretically, but practically with on top of it, the network behind it, um, what you solutions that you are actually needing in your job. That makes sense. So it's, it's a very radical, it's a radically advanced um, way of learning. Um, it's, it's not what executive education does either. Um, executive education oftentimes is, uh, is really more um, on kind of like future facing theoretical applications and so on. I, I don't want to speak too much about this, but that's, it's also not this. This is really the perspective of I want to be empowered to drive digital transformation and lead that within my company. My company is looking to me um for this for solutions and um here's an opportunity for me to understand the concepts discuss them with experts make connections make connections ho at home through the the people that are participating and then make the context to potential corporations and experts that will actually allow me to apply it I know that by the number one bar, uh, the number one university in the United States of America as well. So, uh, so who wouldn't want to uh, do that? Um, I'm not sure if there's any more questions, but um, I, I, look, I hope um, you found this session uh, interesting. And as I said, if there's any questions or anything uh, that anybody has um, that they would like to, um, to to know a little bit more, um, by all means, reach out to either myself or Jenny. We'd be more than happy to chat to you. And equally, if there's if you want to know a little bit more on the Berkeley side of things, Frederick, I know has uh, has has said that he's more than happy to arrange a call or a quick chat with anybody. Um, look, what can I say? I think we're we're, we're coming up to ten to five. Um, can I just say uh, a particular thank you uh, to Robert uh, O'Driscoll for um, attending the session today and also for his support. And um, we really appreciate it, Robert. So thank you again for that. Um, equally, I would very much like to thank Maria for her time today. And I think she's given a kind of a, 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 a an overview as much as one can in, in, in 15 or 20 minutes of, 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 I suppose, the market. And not give it all away, right? Exactly. But really uh, feel free for the, for the attendees, uh, listeners, listeners of, of this fireside chat, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you have any more specific questions about any of the things I mentioned. Um, I would be happy to answer Yeah, anything. Perfect. Well, thank you, Maria. And thanks again for your time today. And, and of course, Frederick, um, uh, thank you for uh, your time as always and your team, Nadej and Christina, um, for your support. And, uh, and look, um, anybody, um, as I said, the closing date is the 20th of September. Um, if anybody hasn't seen the Fireside Chat or heard the Fireside Chat with Pat Reed. I would strongly suggest uh, you, uh, you you seek it out. If you don't if you don't reach out to Jenny, she'll send you the link. But Pat, who uh, is an incredible lady, uh, gave a sense of what happens from a leadership perspective, the agility, uh, and what and, and look. Uh, Pat is working with the New Zealand and Australian governments on agile leadership. Um, she also worked with more Walmart on the on the agile leadership and their two million employees. So I think that speaks volumes in relation to uh, the, the 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 expertise that, uh, that that Pat has. So that's well worth watching as well. So if anybody hasn't seen that, um, uh, reach out. And I think I've. I was going to say I have one more question, but I don't. It's just thanking everyone for joining. Um, well, listen, I'm going to say our goodbyes, um, but thank you very much, everybody. And as I said, reach out uh, if you're interested in participating in the programme. Thank you all again. Bye bye.